Nomad Fishing Charters. And today, I'm gonna to be telling you a little bit about mackerel, whether it's Spanish mackerel, cereal mackerel, or even king mackerel, also known as kingfish. I'm gonna be showing you some of the ways I like to set my rods up and rig for these fish. Types of hooks I like to use, the baits that should go on these hooks, and a little more information that may help you on your next outing. Before we start working on knots and rigs, I wanted to thank all of you that have taken the time to subscribe to the channel. I thank you very much for that. I also wanted to encourage those of you that have not subscribed to go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification button. Also, don't forget to share these with your friends. If you fish, there's a good chance you have friends that fish. Make sure you share this information with them and get them to subscribe also. It is your support that will keep this page growing and it will keep more videos coming. For this demonstration, I'm using 20 pound test. This is monofilament. So I'm going to take the line here and just grab enough so that I can double it. I'm going to take my pliers, cut that, and I'm going to tie what's known as a spider hitch. I like the spider hitch because it's a lot quicker to tie than a bimini twist. And honestly, it works well. Most of the time, I've never really had a problem with it. So for that reason, I like it. It's very fast. And you can rig it pretty much on the fly. So there you have it. If you're wondering how to tie a spider hitch, I have a video and I'll put the link in the description on how to tie this knot and other knots. Okay, there's my spider hitch. And let me put it up close to the camera so you can see it. And then there's my double line. I can leave this loop like this, but normally if you leave this loop, it's a little harder to tie. So what I like to do is just take the end and trim it. And then I have two pieces at the very end. To this, I'm going to attach my leader. Now there's two ways I can do this. I can use a very small spro swivel. It's right there, tiny swivel. Or I can tie it directly to the mono. Okay. Obviously, if I'm using the swivel, it's very easy. I'm just going to take it and tie a any simple knot will do i'm using a clinch knot but any simple knot will do i'm going to take that i'm going to trim it i'm going to take about a three foot maybe a four foot piece of 20 pound fluorocarbon fluorocarbon is a little stiffer than the mono so it helps it's a little tougher I'm gonna tie another I'm just gonna knot it here using a clinch knot again make sure that's tight always wet your knots before you cinch them down tie that there and there you have it roughly a three maybe four foot piece you can see it there and to this end I normally tie a long shank hook. Now this one here is a Mustad. You can see the box there. Okay. It's a 5 odd. You can go a little smaller if your baits are small. Uh, this is the size I use most with small pilchards like 3 inch pilchards or large shrimp. This is what I like to use. And again, you can tie whatever knot you like. You can use a uni knot. I do a guinea knot a lot of times, but a clinch knot will work just as fine. So you go there, you tie your knot. Trim the excess. And you're ready to go. This is basically your rig right here. That's all you need. You're going to take a pilchard, and I like to hook them underneath if it's a razor belly and that sharp part right behind the peck fins go right through there and it'll tend to swim down when you pitch it out it also keep it away from the birds if you hook them in the back by the dorsal fin they tend to swim up on the surface and it gives birds the opportunity to pick them off before a fish has a chance to eat them if you are getting cut off a lot and I mean a lot you may want to switch it up and use a small piece of wire for that I use number four 
You can use number two, number three, or number four, depending on the size of the fish. Most of the time I carry either three or four on the boat, and I use four almost 90% of the times. So I have my, my length already cut. And if you really wanna catch them and you don't want them to get away, you're gonna use a small treble hook, okay? Notice this is a kingfish hook. This is a little larger than I like to use. This is a number two. I normally like to use a number four, which is a little bit smaller than this. That with a small pilchard or a shrimp is deadly on mackerel. So you're gonna come through here and you're gonna tie your, your wire using your haywire twist and then you're gonna fish it, finish it off with a barrel twist. You have to crank the, the wire so you don't get pricked. If you don't crank it, you end up with a sharp end there, see? There's your rig, no sharp end. I could touch it as much as I want, no problem. On this end, I can either attach this directly to my leader with an Albright knot, or you can use a swivel here too. You can go with a swivel in between your main line, or your leader in this case, and your wire, okay? I typically just tie it direct but again, I don't use wire a lot for mackerel. I usually just use a long shank and I accept that I'm gonna lose some fish to cutoffs. That's just part of the game. If I am gonna tie it directly, I bend it back like this. And again, these knots are in one of my knot videos. I'll put a link, I'll put a link to all the knot videos in the comments section. So you can look at those if you're not sure. So you're gonna bend it back and then it's an all bright. So we're gonna come through, wrap it around a few times. Like I said, normally I do this with a little heavier line. This line's kind of thin for this. This is only 15 or 20 pound liter, so it doesn't work as well, but you're gonna cinch it down like so. And then what I like to do is finish it off with a haywire twist. Okay. In this case, because it's so light, I gotta actually use the pliers. I normally don't like to use pliers when I'm tying wire. I like to do it with my hands. But this line is so light that it's not gonna hold. So. so once I'm done with my barrel wraps, again, I'm gonna crank it back and forth until it breaks off cleanly. There it is. Now I have no sharp edges. I have a little extra piece of the tagline here. I'm gonna cut that off. And there's my rig. Now this rig here could be used for kingfish, can be used for big cereal mackerels, and it could be used on Spanish mackerel. Again, I like to use the smaller hook. I believe it's a number four in a bronze hook like this with a pilchard or a large shrimp. This is a deadly rig on anything. As far as weight, I normally do not attach any type of weight to my rigs when I'm fishing for mackerel, especially um, Spanish mackerel and cereal mackerel. They're typically near the surface and you're not fishing that deep. So if you hook your bait in the throat, they're gonna swim down and the fish is gonna find them. So those are the two main rigs. Now, can you put your own spin on it? Sure, you can go a little heavier on your line. You can go a little heavier on the wire, even though I don't recommend that. My favorite way to fish for these mackerel is with a long shank and just a piece of floral. We've actually been out just messing around and caught kingfish upwards of 20 to 40 pounds on just a long shank and a piece of floral. So if you're patient and you have your drag set correctly and you have a good spinning reel, there's no reason why you can't catch a very large fish on this. Well guys, there you have it. I hope you found this information to be beneficial and I hope it'll help you put a few more fish in the boat this season. Until next time, this is Captain Orlando Muniz with Nomad Fishing Charters.